The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs... The most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hi everyone, this is James from Cave Dweller Music. I have my co-host Brendan with me here today. And today we're joined by Bobby uh, from the LA stoner psychedelic rock band Salem's Bend. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank, thanks so much for having me. Anytime. Uh, do you want to just tell people who haven't heard your music uh, a little bit about the band, what you play and what you do in the band? Yeah, for sure. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Bobby. I'm the singer and guitarist, uh, or one of the two guitarists for uh, Salem's Bend. We're a uh, heavy rock, you know, kind of psych, sort of, sort of stoner rock, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, uh, you know, we're very inspired by like the 70s kind of um, heavy classic bands like Black Sabbath, um, you know, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, Thin Lizzy, um, you know all those kinds of, I was like, you know, and, and like, I love all that stuff, like the obscure bands like Dust or, you know, mm. um, Budgie. Budgie is one of my favorites. Nice. So yeah, that, good choice. I love uh, Budgie. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the kind of stuff that uh, that we like. And so we try to make music in, in that vein, sort of inspired by that, but still with our own mm-hmm. twist and our own, uh, you know, something something new to add to it. Yeah. I think you definitely have like a really old school inspired sound and I appreciate that you kept sort of the things that were best about that sound intact. But like you said, you have made it fresh and exciting. Uh, it doesn't sound like a worship album or like a worship band or anything like that. No, it doesn't. That's what's like so nice. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, I try. That's one thing I'm, I'm always like very, I'm almost paranoid about is like <laughs> trying to, you know, um, uh, uh, make sure it's not i'm not just like rehashing an old riff that that you know that somebody else already made like trying to bring something new and interesting you know i imagine that's tough with this style of music though because there's so many amazing bands in the period that did it all so well that so many riffs have already been covered oh yeah i mean like they always they always say you know every every like great riff was already written in the 70s so it's it's hard to really come right. something totally brand new but um but yeah, it's it's it is definitely something I'm always thinking about. Is like how can I capture that vibe, but but still not sound directly like something else, you know? I think that's important. It kind of sets a lot of bands apart because you get other bands that literally just straight up just make the exact same stuff and like I like this band, so I made another version of it, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right. If you can, if you can just, if you, when you hear that song and you just think exactly of another song, you're like, oh, that's the riff from this song. Then it's, you know, it kind of takes away from it because you, you just, now you're thinking of that other, that other classic song or whatever, you know? So you right, gotta, right, you gotta right. Add something a little bit new and a little bit fresh or a little bit unique so that it's, people aren't instantly yeah. thinking of these old. I think, like, exactly. what, like, what I love about your band is it's got that, like, quintessential style or like sound from that era but like it's all original you know so like i actually end up like kind of humming like you know the ride the night song you know like mm, 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 you know and like i'm just like it's a good fucking tune dude you know thank you thank you thank you so was this something that your i guess your dad inspired uh like the music taste is it something you kind of grew up with him listening to around the house um, yeah, so sort of, um, I, I, we didn't really listen to kind of heavy rock or anything in my house. Um, uh, okay. but like, I think, you know, my dad definitely did listen a little bit to Led Zeppelin, like, and, um, you know, he, he was into some of those classic bands from the seventies, but I didn't, I didn't really hear them in the house. It was more, um, kind of. I, like my dad is works in movies um and wow. so like we had a lot of movie soundtracks um okay that that was really you know kind of fun and interesting to listen to as a kid and and then <clears throat> my parents were both into reggae um cool and and then it was like yeah like that and then you know, just whatever was on the radio and whatever my older brother would listen to um 
Okay. So yeah, I, I, so I didn't who, really come across this the seventies like kind of heavy rock stuff until until a little bit later. Okay, that was going to be my next question: is uh, how did you end up coming in up coming into this and falling in love with it? Um, so it was really was from um, uh, Iron Maiden. So mm-hmm. um, my brother is he's two years older. He went off to college uh, in high school. You know, I, I was a junior high school when he was heading off to college, and before that, we we shared a computer, um, and so. When he was leaving, I I got, bought my own computer so I could still have one. Um, and but I the music we had was just whatever he had downloaded. You know, it was downloaded from Kazaa or LimeWire. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and any CDs he had bought and ripped on the computer. So I just downloaded all his music. But there was one song I I guess I didn't forgot to get, and it was um, this like techno version of so, the Fan of the Opera theme, like that like from the musical. You know. No, not not the Maiden song. So <laughs> I was trying to find that on Kazaa. I was like, Phantom of the Opera. Um, and I, I saw Iron Maiden, and I was like, I didn't know who they were. <clears throat> so I downloaded that song, and I listened to it, and it just like blew our mind. I was like, what, what is this? <laughs> like, I listened to it like two or three times in a row, like immediately, and I was just like, whoa, this is crazy. Um so that I just started like researching them and then researching the bands that they were into. And that kind of led me to like the seventies guys. Cause you know, like the all the eighties rockers, um, cite like, you know, the, the seventies greats as their influences, like, um, obviously Sabbath and deep purple and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I kind of, I kind of started with the eighties metal and then I worked my way backwards into the it's 70s. funny because i was like um a little bit the same way i i grew up with my dad's stuff so he was he always listened to like 70s prog rock and stuff like that and um i liked it as a kid and then i never like kind of like fell in love with it but once i got into like the heaviest stuff like you said i ended up coming back to that and re-listening to it and falling in love with it properly nice you can't shoot on the classics honestly like <laughs> I'm, i never really heard anyone say like dio sucks you know <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah <nah. laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's just the best. So, how did you end up uh, working with Ryan? Um, so, let's see. Um, the there is a um, there's a guy named Eric, um, the general for the Stone Rock Army. If you've ever come across okay. that on Facebook, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Thanks, like, yeah, like he has a great group, um, and uh, we've been chatting on Facebook for years, and he was always trying to get us to come to Montreal because this is where he lives. Mm-hmm. And um, so last year he <clears throat> he was like, "Yo, I want to make it happen. Like, I can I can connect you with um, uh, Fred from Sons of Arrakis, who's who's their mm-hmm. lead singer and guitarist, um, and." Cause like he has got connections with black throne, um, or, you know, I guess he was, you know, part of the black throne team. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, so then, so then I started chatting with Fred and then, so, and Fred, you know, connected me with Ryan. Um, and so it was like the three of us just kind of going back and forth, having, having calls every now and then, um, to, to plan a tour around here. Um, so it was really, literally, it was like a year, it was like a full year in the making. <clears throat> wow. How many shows do you guys have lined up for this? Um, so we have nine shows. Um, we were, we were trying to get a few more, uh, a couple fell through and then we I, I wanted to add a few East coast U S. Um, just since we're in this area, you know, but um, <laughs> it was just, it was it was hard to add. I kind of waited a little bit too long to try to add those. And then, um, I was just, I was so busy with other things. It didn't quite, didn't quite pan out, but, um, I mean, it's, it's all new places for us over here. So it's been, you know, we're, we're excited about it. Oh yeah. What's, um, what, what's been your uh, favorite spot so far? Your favorite venue? Um, let's see, man. Uh, the 
the venue the the venue in Quebec City had like a really nice stage and great sound. Um, that that was that was really that was really fun. But um, uh, that that was called La Anti, and uh, but yeah, literally every show has been has been awesome um, so far. It's been great crowds. The people are, you know, having fun and rocking out with us. So that's all we can ask for. Oh yeah. So uh, obviously you're in uh, you're touring right now. How's that been going? Been going great. Um, yeah, we we flew into uh, we flew into Ottawa on mm-hmm. Tuesday. Wait, to, well, no, today's Monday. Yeah, we flew into Ottawa. We left Tuesday night, landed Wednesday morning, and we had a show that night in Gatineau, which is you know just across the river. Um, and, um, and that was cool. I mean, we were like, you know, we got like one hour of sleep on the plane, <laughs> so <laughs> we, were, we were pretty tired, but it was, it was, uh, it was a great show. Um, everybody was rocking out. Everybody was really nice. And, um, so that, that is, yeah, it's been, it's just been like great nights everywhere. We then went to Montreal after that. Um, Montreal was awesome. It was like a packed house. Uh, that's where the, the um, Sons of Rackets are from, so that's kind of, this is oh, kind okay. of like their home base. Um, so yeah, like that was that was a great show. We had um, we had some friends come through. Uh, uh, the drummer, um, our drummer Alex, he's uh, he's filling in for our, our usual drummer Zach. Um, Alex's brother came came by to to the show, and so it was, yeah, it's been it's been really really fun. Um, we then did uh, like Quebec City, and then um, Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke is cool; it's kind of a smaller town. Um, yeah, but uh, we played with um, the local band. There was called Occult Witches, and they were awesome. I mean, they were incredible. Just, just really shredding. The guitarist was like had the tape licks, um, and um, yeah, so that was a really cool show. And then last night. Trois River. Um, that was that was really cool too. It was like this tiny, very kind of small venue, um, like kind of sort of in the basement, like lower floor of this of this building. And then the upper mm-hmm. floors was like a kind of a band apartment where we got to stay for the night. So that was that was pretty yeah. cool. Nice. Yeah. Have you managed to uh, have any poutine yet? Are you there? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was that was one of the. The first things we did in uh, <laughs> Montreal, and, and we went to um, La Banquise to get some some poutine, and it was it was great. <laughs> nice, yeah. Poutine. I, would, I poutine. that's like the thing, like like poutine, and there's like there's a couple other neat ones um, that are Canadian, well, and it's a uh, Canadian club. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like all that funny, like. Like, is the poutine better there? Like, are, is is what's your opinion? <laughs> I mean, I think it's good. Like, I, I, it was definitely I've I had that many poutines. Um, I've, I had poutine in Alberta on our when we went to Canada the first time, and that was good. But yeah, maybe this one was a little bit better. I think. All right. There was more variety, I guess, of uh, different different styles. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the whole thing, too, is like, you know, you have the traditional poutine, but then I feel like there's just been so many, like, neat doctored up versions, like. Yeah. Some people are purists. Um, <laughs> what Have you noticed any difference between the Canadian crowds at the shows and the American crowds? <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Yeah, a, not not a huge difference. Um, um, there, there definitely seems to be. Um, I guess the only the only real difference is um, <clears throat> there, there's there well there's like this in, the, in the U.S. as well, but um, <clears throat> people seem to be a little bit more like engaged, like the crowds. You know, they're kind of more active yeah like rocking out with us um yeah and that's and that's cool like 
in, in Los Angeles, like, you know, people might be really into the music, but um, they're, show not, it. they're not like, you know, running around or, or you know, starting mosh pit. Or, you know, like, I mean, yeah. for other bands, for other bands, they might, but you know, just like when we like when we play our hometowns, it's uh, it's not quite as as people aren't quite as excited, I guess. You know, like um, yeah. So I think the one thing that's nice about um, when when we go on tour to anywhere, but especially to a different country, um, the fans are kind of they're they're somewhat uh, more I don't know receptive, I guess, because they're just like impressed that you would come all that way. <laughs> like yeah. we had some people I, just sort of shocked that like you're like would, out in the middle of nowhere yeah like, like like in Sherbrooke they're like why why are you here like <laughs> they're really just asking <laughs> why we're there but not like in a bad way just like they're they're pleasant yeah stuff. appreciative I think yeah, well I, like a way to think about it is like you know music's important it makes them feel important you know and then you know so it's like there's a whole there's a there's a lot to that it, it's not yeah. just that though, like because I I can tell you as someone from Australia that what you said before really resonated. Where people just don't get as many bands in other countries, um, yeah, right? So the ones that they do get, it's really exciting for them, and it means a lot. Like New Zealand, even more so. I grew up in New Zealand. Like New Zealand's even more so. Like it's the end of the world, dude. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> people people don't come there, and then when they do, like you go out of your way to see them. Like I flew between the two islands to see. Uh, to see a band once like i went to nice. another part of the country like just because that was the only place they were playing on tours like i'm gonna see them yeah yeah that's that's awesome man and and, and like there we had a um uh a friend and a fan um named kevin from, who's i think he's in new brunswick um and so he drove down to quebec city which was about a seven hour drive but because that was like wow. the closest we were getting um but like that was really cool to to, to see him there because like he's like, he was like man this is you know we haven't been anywhere close because we're we're always just on the west coast or kind of central U.S. so right he's like I, I don't want to miss it so he drove all the way out which was which was really cool yeah and to yeah. him it was probably like worth it you know he's like when am I going to see them again <laughs> yeah right 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 like there's a bunch of shows that are in New York and I'm like oh man that's like a two hour plus drive you know if i don't yeah. take a train and then if i take a train it's maybe two and a half hours yeah i gotta like from the train station i gotta you know get to the venue and then all that you know or if i'm driving then i'm just like you know until i like i don't know it's just like one of those things like i don't want to drive two plus hours for a show and then like drive back home you know what i mean like yeah. that's a lot that's a oh man right. it's such a pain in the ass you know so yeah. well, we will we're, we're lucky because we live in southern california so it's <laughs> like if if a, if a band's gonna tour we're gonna probably get them yeah yeah exactly yeah that's why i think it's like you get a little spoiled in uh in these big cities like uh around the west coast um because mm -hmm. yeah everybody comes through there and and so like that the other, yeah, that's the other thing is is um, in LA especially. There's just so much happening all the time. Mm. Every night is there's like thirty concerts around the city, and this there can even be the same genre happening. Like even as small as kind of like the stoner rock or heavy rock scene is in in right. LA. Like there still could be two <laughs> separate shows happening, and so like. And then mix that in with like movie premieres and like museum openings and art walks and all all this crap. That it's like it's you, you get like you get so overloaded as you know living there. That's like oh man, it's it's hard to get. It's hard to decide for, what to do. Yeah, like it's hard <laughs> to decide what to do. So then you just end up doing nothing. <laughs> or like yeah, you know, yeah, I've been, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's it's a little bit like harder to get people to come out to the shows because it's it's. You Definitely. got a lot of competition, and then it's it's just a little bit kind of like ah, well, there's a lot happening. I'll you know, I'll I'll see some, I'll see them again, or you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like you know they'll be back, so it's like I'll, yeah. I'll just see them next next time. Yeah, but you guys yeah, have a, awesome, an back. awesome. Uh, definitely, that's true. You don't know if they're coming <laughs> back sometimes. Um, yeah, they could break up, you know, and then 
And then it's like, oh crap, I didn't see their last show. Yeah, right. yep. like, also- or like, you know, hey, something's happening and all of a sudden, boom, um, a family events happening and you can't skip out, you know, like, or something. You know what I mean? Like, or they die. Little- like, I, the last, the first time I saw Gua, I was like debating oh, with God. us because I, they were clashing with someone else. I'm like, no, I'm going to go see Gua. And then, like, a week later, David Brocky died. I was like, okay, oh, I'm that- really glad I managed to see that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, like with with um, like the classic bands from the seventies too. Like mm. the past, the past, you know what? Five years we were losing all these these music icons. So it's like, damn, we gotta we gotta see them while they're still around. Definitely, that's why uh, Yes came through recently, and I was like, there's no way I'm not gonna see them because I've never seen them, and he knows if they'll play another yeah. tour. Yeah, exactly. Just gotta do it. Exactly. And then it's not like they charge, like most of them don't charge that much. Like unless you're looking at like Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue right. or something like that. But like the older guys from like the 70s and 60s bands, like they only charge like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. Yeah. Which is not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, exactly. well, it all depends on your perspective, right? Like the other night, like I saw um, some of one, a couple of my favorite hardcore bands for like, I think it was like in advance like 20 bucks or something silly you know what i mean like right internet yeah. fees is like 9.99 or something you know what i mean like how's yeah. that i was there for 30 what, bucks buy a couple beers and then um i feel like if i went to the venue i didn't i'd skip the internet fee but like i'm pretty much in the door for like 20 bucks like i have yeah, something you know yeah right and then you can pay with 300 or 400 to see Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. I, I or like see even it. Tool. Like, I would love to go see Tool, but like, I, like, yeah. Dude, they're overpriced. Like, they're so you overpriced. Know, like, you know, right. It's just like, it's kind of like, God damn it. <laughs> like, Tool, yeah. Tool's charge is like 300 bucks for a ticket. I'm like, you're not worth that much. Like, even, even the nosebleeds, like, you're in the back. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. Great. And it's like a couple of hundred bucks still for Tool. Yeah. Dang. That's why I I got tickets to see um it's in April. Uh do you know the Rady Shell in San Diego? I don't think so. I'm not familiar. It's like this big venue in the harbor that's like a big amphitheater built on a little island. Um and it's like all that's open cool. air. It, it's it's really cool. Um but uh the lead singer from Tool, Jonathan uh James Maynard Keenan. It's oh, his sixtieth yeah. sixtieth birthday. And uh, he's got like all the members of two of his projects, plus all the guys from Primus, uh, together Whoa. for one show, and they're all going to play on stage simultaneously. All three, all three bands, and all cover each other's songs. Oh, that sounds insane, dude. That sounds wild. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be wild. <laughs> I'm excited to see how it plays out. Yeah, that's awesome. But like he, like for that, he charged like ninety bucks. But if you yeah. see Tool, it's like three hundred. I'm like, I'd, I'd rather, you know, like I don't understand the. Bad. Or yeah. unreasonable, I guess, right? It's like a more unique show anyway, too. Exactly. Way more unique. And you get to see like all the cool guys from Primus, like L and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, for sure. Uh, Les Claypool. Uh, yeah. Brendan, I know you have a bunch of questions lined up that you want to ask. So I'll let you uh, jump in for a bit. I'm talking oh, too much. N- no worries, <laughs> dude. Um, well, we already hit up some of the the uh some of your newest venue questions but your hometown venue um what what is it and like what what's your favorite spot to play you know like where do you uh where is it um yeah so so we're from los angeles obviously um and um we're kind of spread spread out around the city i live in inglewood and um the other two of the other guys live in downtown and then bass player lives in kind of hollywoodish um but we um as far as a favorite venue um there's a few like there used to be more before the pandemic but a lot of them closed um during the pandemic and then they just haven't come back or if they did come back as a venue it's like different music scene and so it's so like some of our favorite spots closed, but um, right now there's still there's still some cool spots. Um, there's uh, kind of like our our 
our old standby, you know, like our, our go-to spot that, you know, if people are coming through town uh, and, and hit us up to help them book a show, I always recommend the Redwood Bar. Um, yeah. So that's in, it's in downtown LA. <clears throat> it's kind of like a small dive bar. Um, it's like nautical themed. So it's kind of, it got this kind of cool, like pirate stuff and like, you know, boat anchors. And <laughs> it's actually, it's really cool. It's a cool little bar. Um, and, uh, like the booker there, Eddie is like a really cool guy. Um, and so we, we've played there a bunch of times. Um, and like, yeah, that, that's kind of like the spot, I guess we, we always sort of, always like lead people towards who are, who are coming, you know, coming through LA. Um, <clears throat> but there's also another cool spot called permanent records. Um, so it's like, a, it's a record store. Um, and then they have, um, uh, I guess what's called the roadhouse attached to it. So mm-hmm. they, it's a little bar and a music venue. So during the day they have, um, uh, on where the stage is, it's just like more vinyl racks, but then at night they push them to the side and then it's, it's a stage. So it's actually a really cool spot. It's I forget the exact town, but it's basically just north of downtown LA. But um, <clears throat> that's a really cool spot. We just we just played there um, a couple weeks before the tour, and um, yeah, it's it's just a cool vibe because the record store is still open uh, while the show's open, so you can go you know in between bands or whatever you can go peruse the the vinyl and stuff. Oh so yeah, it's cool. It's a, it's a good spot. Nice. Then, um, how, well, uh, what's your favorite venue that you've been to uh, besides your current tour? You know, like a place that you're like, all right, I want to get back out there. Um, yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, there's, there's a few, um, there's, there's a, we've, we did South by Southwest a few times and um, there's a venue out there called the spider house in, in Austin. That was, that's really cool. It's just like, it's kind of this like sprawling area. Like it's, it's, they've got it two outdoor stages. I think it's maybe even three. Right. Yeah. And then there's like an indoor stage. It's just like, it's really big. Um, and, uh, just really cool vibe and like, you know, got Lone Star for like two dollars or something. So <laughs> that's a cool, yeah. that's a really cool spot. Um, but then also uh, another place that we we really had a blast playing um, and would love to play again was was the Black Heart in London. Um, we did uh, right. did Desert Fest London there in twenty nineteen. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was super cool and like that room. It's just like a, it's a great, it's kind of a small room. It's probably maybe 200 people, um, max, but it was like, it was wall to wall, like packed for the show. And it's it a great vibe in there. It was like, the sound was, was pretty good too. And everybody was rocking out. Uh, so that was a really cool spot. Oh, I, I got to mention one other, one other place. Um, in, it's just outside of Los Angeles. Um, it's in Palmdale. It's about a, maybe an hour drive north of LA and it's called transplants and um the owner Matt is just like super cool guy he's been it's a it's a brewery that's that's been open for probably I don't know eight or ten years or something but he just started the venue part um maybe 2019 or 2020 or something um and it's like it's an amazing stage it's a huge room like it's like a warehouse kind of room, you know. So big high ceiling, great big stage. Yeah. He, he has he, he has a couple guys doing sound who are like really good. Um, so like the sound is always really good. They have great lights and stage setup, and he's just like a really cool guy. So and he's he like he loves kind of heavy music and all this stuff. So he just books all of these heavy bands that are that are coming on tour through through the area. Um, and so yeah, so transplants, that's a that's a fantastic spot. Right on. Hell yeah. Um so 
your song that you did, your cover song, uh, Walk on Water, uh, for Ripple Tribute to CCR. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been, I, I love that album. I, it's like, I feel like every band just did like it justice. Um, how did you guys get uh, linked up with that? Like, uh, did they like say, Hey, I want you to play the song or you're like, did you like, I want to play this one or how did that work out? Um, yeah. So, um, Todd, uh, who's like at ripple there's, um, we have a, we have a, um, kind of a private, facebook chat that's like with just the ripple music bands and like and like you know friends of the bands and like stuff like that um and so he'll use that sometimes just to like kind of more quickly disseminate information to all the uh, ripple bands and so he just one day like he he had i guess been thinking of this for a while like oh i wanted it would be so cool to have like a heavy cover tribute album to ccr um and so he just one day posted on there like hey like if we did if ripple did a um you know a ccr cover album like what bands would be interested in this and like what song would you want to do and like immediately it was just like everybody was just like yeah it sounds tight and they just were you know shouting out the songs they wanted to do so um actually i saw that message kind of late so a lot of people had already claimed like you know some some of my favorite tunes and so I, I yeah. went back and I listened. I listened to their first album. So that, that's probably my favorite from them. Um, and so I listened to the first CCR album just to see, um, you know, just some, for some inspiration. And I came across that "Walk on the Water" song. And so I was like, "Oh crap! This is actually a really cool song." Um, I, it's one I had forgotten about. You know, because they don't they don't yeah. play it, they don't play it on the radio really. Um, so. So yeah, I just I was like, hey, this is a, like a it's a fun song. It's a song I feel like we could we can cover and and um, do some justice to. And then um, it's also just a fun excuse to like have a three minute guitar solo, you know? <laughs> like the song is like it's like a minute and a half, and then the last three minutes is just like guitar <laughs> solo stuff. So yeah, that was that was pretty fun. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, that's sweet. I, yeah, like I said, that album has been uh, really great. So many awesome bands on it. Yeah, everybody did. Uh, good. Yeah, I think that'd be like it'd be a pretty cool show, like a Ripple Festival, like that does all like the covers and stuff. Like, be pretty yeah, cool. that'd, be, that'd be super cool. Yeah. Um. Anyways, um. So you guys uh, popped out a new song recently. Um. Is there a new album in the works? What do you got going on? Um, so we, we, we are working on new material. Um, we haven't like recorded anything just yet. Um, we, we like, I, I kind of was taking a, like a little bit of a recording break just because, um, my girlfriend and I bought a house and in, in 2021, and so I, ha- I moved out of my old place, which which was where my studio was. I had I had built myself a studio in the garage, okay. Uh, kind of like made it soundproof and everything. And so, so when we bought this new place. I've just been rebuilding the studio. Um, that was taking me longer than I thought to construct. Yeah. So I was just like, you know, kind of like, I, I, so I just have so many ideas for songs and I have, we have a lot of stuff we kind of workshopping, but, um, the studio is now, it's now, it's mostly done. It's done enough that we can use it. We've been, we've been jamming in there and practicing in there. Um, so oh, yeah. it's, 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 you know, I still have a little bit of, construction work to not not construction but just like um putting up some of the acoustic treatments and baffles and everything but it already is sounding really good in there we we did um we recorded a judas priest cover for All right. for um the glory or death records if, if you've ever if you've heard of those guys um and uh they've been coming up with these cool compilation albums the first one was thin lizzie and then they did a Deep Purple, 
and then they just um last year maybe or i can't remember exactly but um they came out with the Judas priest one and so i i was like man Judas priest is one of my favorite bands so um i was like please like let us <laughs> let's do a cover and um the studio this, my studio wasn't even finished I, did, I like i just it just had drywall and like you know there was like nothing in there so i just kind of quickly threw in some baffles and um wired in an outlet and like so we could <laughs> record the drums and everything and it it turned out really nice like the I, the way part of the reason like i was spending more time on the studio was to make it sound how i wanted it to sound like to get um because you know as as you know list our music you know we you know we love the classic 70s um artists and that kind of sound so um to try to capture that sound even better um yeah like i've built the studio in a way just like with higher ceilings and just thought more about the actual um acoustic environment to so that like i can get that sound a little bit easier like it's not as much of a struggle um so like like for the Judas Priest cover, I recorded the drums and um, I didn't even barely have to EQ or do any compression or I barely did anything. It just like sounded fantastic. <laughs> so, nice. so I'm, I'm excited because now, you know, it'll just make recording a little bit faster, a little bit easier, and we can hopefully come out with some more new music like faster. Um, because like there's just so many new ideas I want to get out, but um, you know, like it just I just we just gotta start putting them down. That's awesome. Definitely exciting stuff. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Um. I guess. I guess we one more good one, uh, or at least I think it's a good one. <laughs> I hope uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I forgot. I'm just kidding. No, um, what's your uh, what's what's your favorite song to play live? Um, oh, good question. I think, um, I probably have two favorites. Um, we we always have fun with um, Space Duster off the new album. We 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 yeah. pretty much play that pretty much play that every show because it it seems to be one that people like and then it's 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 also fun fun for us to play but then my the the other favorite is is um a tip of salem off the first album it's like the last song on the first album um because uh we usually when we play it live uh the 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 ending of the song um, sort of a slower kind of doomy song and then the end you know it's like picks up tempo and it's like we start like guitar solo and it's like um, more faster tempo kind of thing and so when we do it live we extend that solo out usually by you know a minute or two so it's like that's, that's, awesome. fun. that's fun for me because I just get to like you know <laughs> just shred some shred some solos and stuff and yeah, that so that one's really actually a lot of fun to play. We always try we 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 when we have time for it, we always try to include that one because it's it's just a good um, it's a good kind of show closer, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's high energy. It's like ah, uh, it's a good one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I've got two more questions for you. Then uh, one is uh, a bit of an ambush question, but we'll save that for last. Uh, <laughs> so. What, if anything, has stood out to you this year? Uh, any albums that you've heard that are must listens? Um, oh man, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, trying to think of what I've come across recently. Um, let me think. Um, no rush. Yeah. I mean, one one thing that I'm 
uh, project I'm I'm really excited to like hear once it comes out. It's not fully out, but um, uh, there's a band called Master Nasty, and okay. it it was um, it's a project from uh, uh, this guy named Dylan who had a band called Shotgun Sawyer. Who, okay. Oh, I know uh, Shotgun. Yeah, so like Shock and Sword is really rad. They they broke up um, uh. like twenty twenty one maybe or something. They um, have like that song. That like it starts off like dude walking into a bar and blasts a shotgun. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking they're, tough. I love it. Yeah, so they're they're super rad, and so they, um, so Dylan's new project is called Master Nasty, and so. Um, I think they have one single out or, or maybe he just sent it to me and <laughs> that's how I've heard it. But um, re- it's really cool. Like just very like blues inspired, like heavy riffs. Is uh, uh, is this, is a single called run through the jungle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, I guess the, the cover they did um, the, 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 he has the CCR cover on, mm. on, um, on the, the ripple compilation um mm-hmm. but then even as another one I, I, maybe it's not out yet maybe he had just sent it to me um because okay. we, we were um we I'm, I'm good friends with dylan and, and we were um like we'll, we'll share songs with each other and he actually even came down to my studio um last summer and we kind of were like you know workshopping some songs for for like the uh, future album and everything, but um, he has one that's like fully done. It's ready to, ready to release. Um, awesome. I think he's just getting figuring out a label for it, but um, that that's definitely like really exciting for me. Um, and then uh, trying to think of some some other. I know I came across something recently that was just really blowing my mind. Um, I can't remember. I'll try, I'll try to think of it. Okay. I'll ask you the other question in the meantime then. Uh, yeah. So the other one is, uh, I think we take your time on this one. Um, if you were stranded on a desert island and all you had to keep you sane, I guess, was is a solar powered discman and three CDs on repeat until you got rescued, what would you want those albums to be? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> definitely um one of them would would have to be um black sabbath paranoid mm-hmm. yeah. um because it's just like it's like my favorite album like i i don't ever get tired of listening to <laughs> paranoid you know so that's like awesome. i feel like that's that's like one of the keys of the desert island thing is like you have to you know, if you're stuck with that for <laughs> on repeat, you can't you can't yeah. use something you're gonna get annoyed with. And like, it doesn't right. matter how many times I hear War Pigs. Every time I hear War Pigs, it's just as exciting as like the first time I heard it. And like, I hear, I even like, I've heard it like you know, I don't know, hundreds of times. <laughs> but still, every now and then, I'll hear something that a little bit that I'd never caught, that I never caught onto before. Like maybe it's a little bass lick or some other little small element. You know, like right. maybe I'm, I'm listening to it in a different environment or I have a different set of speakers and I can hear, oh, like he did that little drum thing or something, you know? <laughs> so like that and that whole album is just, uh, it's like my favorite. So definitely. Yeah, no, no filler. Yeah. Yeah. It's just pure fucking awesome rock. Um, so definitely, definitely paranoid. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else what else would I bring? Um I might also bring um the first cadaver album, the self titled okay. one. Nice. Cause that that's probably my my cadaver's probably my favorite um band of the you know, twenty tens, I guess, um in in this genre. Like they're just really really blew my mind and that that first album it's funny because I, I came across that on youtube it was just that's where i find like a lot of my new music is just like 
browsing YouTube and it's like a recommended video, you know? Um, yeah. So it's like that, 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 um, their album came up on there as a recommended thing. And so I started listening to it and it's <clears throat> like the guitar and voice is hard panned left and the drums and, you know, bass are hard panned to the right. And it's like, so it sounds so old school. Like it just sounds even really more like late sixties, like that kind of production mm -hmm. style. Um, and so I, it took me like, I listened through it once and I was like, this is weird. Like, <laughs> I thought, what, why, why did they do that? Um, you know, it just sounds crazy. But then I, but it was like something intriguing about it. So I listened to it again and I was like, whoa, this is really good. And I listened to it a third time and I was like, oh my God, they're amazing. <laughs> What's uh, the um? What's the name of their first album? I think it's just self-titled. I think it just says Cadaver on it. Okay. Um, but it's like the picture is like the three guys. Um, it's with their original bass player, but it's like they're standing in a forest, and they're you know their clothes are like straight out of like 1971 or something. Like they everything about it looks like it belonged in like 1970. Um, but That's it's awesome. like that album. I just. I have it on I have it on cassette and I have it on um, vinyl and CD as well. So like whenever I'm in my van and I'm just like I'm I like I can't think of what I want to listen to. Like I just will, I'll pop in that cassette, you know, because it's just always like a kind of fresh, you know, fresh and exciting for me. Awesome. And then so one see, more. A, a third one. <clears throat> a third one would probably be. Um, I'd probably bring like the Bee Gees greatest hits or something <laughs> cause like something to just to like life live in the mood up and so I could like you know if I'm going a little crazy I can just like dance around this desert island to the Bee Gees nice. yeah cause, like, I, 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 there's something about the Bee Gees I just love like they're just I love the, the disco uh, like it's just so fun and like kind it's of high ridiculous. energy. Yeah, yeah, high energy. Like it's kind of over the top and ridiculous, but like, yep. <laughs> like in a cool way. Like I don't know. Um, that that's uh, Parliament for me. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. like, like f funk, old school funk is just so energetic and like upbeat mm. and fun. Yeah, I love I love funk. I love all the um, like classic funk bands and like. But yeah, I even love the disco bands. Like they're just like <laughs> they were just ridiculous. But like, yeah, something about like those those BG songs are just so well written, they're very well crafted. Those like harmonies and everything are just mm -hmm. some some I just like about them. So I'd, I'd probably bring that just huh. to keep me keep me entertained. You know, it's a good spread. We get some people on like all three other albums are like extreme metal. And, like I like extreme metal too, but I think I need something like else if yeah, i had to listen to all of it on repeat to cleanse the palate you know yeah just to kind of exactly just change your brain yeah. waves a little bit <laughs> everything yeah. can't be like crazy slam metal the entire time you know <laughs> slides yeah. three slam albums <laughs> yeah 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 no three, way three grindcore albums totaling 15 minutes um <laughs> right 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 <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> that's <laughs> funny all right. Well, that kind of brings us to time. Um, but is there anything that we, uh, we didn't cover that you want to cover, or do you think we kind of got it all? Um, no. I mean, I, th I think uh, I think you got it all. Um, um, I, 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 well, I guess the only thing I, I, I would talk about that um, maybe I didn't mention before. I mean, I, I kind of mentioned this in passing, but like. <clears throat> I do all the recording for our music myself. Oh yeah. Hmm. Um, so like the first first album I did, um, I actually recorded it by myself in my garage studio. Like I play all the parts on it because I didn't, I didn't have a band yet. Um, so it's like I'm doing the drums, the bass, and the guitar and singing. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. But <laughs> but like I didn't like I didn't want it to be a solo project. I wanted to, I wanted to make a band. So. Um, I then uh, I put it out. I presented it not as like you know a solo thing. I presented it as this band, Salem's Band, and then um, you know it's kind of went went from there. And then you know I found these the cool guys I'm playing with. But 
Um, but yeah, so like second album we recorded with these guys, uh, Kevin and Zach, Kevin on bass, Kevin Schofield and Zach Hewling on drums. And <clears throat> so yeah, I do all the production myself. Um, that's, that's pretty sweet. That's impre- that's pretty impressive, man. But uh, I love like the opening track on that one, Balthazar. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, Balthazar, Black Balthazar. Yeah. That's good, man. Thanks. Yeah, the, what's I guess um, kind of interesting about that album is um, it, I didn't really intend to make an album. I just was um, I had kind of. I built my studio and I was trying to dial in my recording techniques to try to get like the sounds I wanted. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, in in you know at the same time I'm trying to dial in sounds and and figure out how you know try to get better at recording. Um, you know I'm still like writing songs and so I'm like, well I might as well like test out a song. You know, test out some sort of new miking technique or new recording technique with one of one of my new songs I'm writing. So um, each song I kind of used a different mic- microphone or recording technique just to kind of test things out. So it's really like each song was like a recording test. But but then but at the end I was like, hey, these are actually like good songs. <laughs> I might as well like make an album out of it. <clears throat> and um, so like I recorded one more track to make it like a little bit, you know, just to fill up the time. And, um, and then I put it out as an album. Um, and then I just kind of like snowballed from there. Like, um, Todd from ripple, uh, he heard it cause Bucky, there's a guy named Bucky who's on, um, Bucky Brown. He's on, um, just band camp all the time. He's like a band camp hero and he discovered his new artist, and he sent it to to Todd at Ripple and he um, he was like hey you, you should check out these guys and so Todd thought it was cool and he then reached out to us about I think um, um, Bucky's in Doom Chart uh, he's a Doom Chart contributor yeah. as well I'm pretty sure yeah um, he's, he's I am too Doom by Chart, the way yep. oh cool nice yeah um, so yeah yeah you, you know Bucky then he's, mm-hmm. he's a great guy um, but yeah so, so that was that was that and then um the, the kind of funny story was like, so Todd um, reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, do you want to sign for like a vinyl release and um, distribution deal for this? And so I was like, heck yeah, man, sounds cool. Like it, I took a little bit of time to read over the deal and make sure. So it actually was like, I was a little bit like, I didn't like sign right away because, you know, you hear all these horror stories of like mm. bands signing away their rights and all that stuff. So I, I really... I really like scrutinized this whole contract and like showed it to some people and stuff just to make sure. Cause like, I mean now, now I know it's like Todd's a great guy. He's not going to write a contract. Of course, but over. you mm-hmm. don't want to like, yeah, you don't want to be silly into it. And all of a sudden you can't yeah. do anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, and at the time, like I didn't, I didn't know who he was. So it was like, I, you know, I got to really do my due diligence here, but, um, but yeah, so then I, you know, we signed the record over and, and he, um, he pretty much like immediately was like, "Hey, um, I got this other band from the East Coast, Kind. They're like a super group, um, you know, of, of other cool bands from from that area. They're from they're like in the Boston area. And he's like, they want to tour the West Coast. Like, would you want to tour with them to be like their you know support group and like you know provide the gear and everything with them? And so I was like, heck yeah, man! Like, I just said like yes immediately, but Cause I didn't tell him I didn't have a band yet. <laughs> I just was like, yes, I'll do the tour. And then I was like, and then I had to figure out how I would make it happen. Um, and then I was, just was able was to, that to kind who did close encounters. That was that, that album from like 2000, um, I want to say 13. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, a really cool it's, album. Art. I think it's, yeah, it's, I think it's 2015. Cause that, that was, but oh, yeah, oh, maybe, okay, totally. the, maybe the second one is 2015. I, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, they, they're on Ripple. They have like this, yeah, cool kind of spacey. Yeah, um, yeah, like the space sci-fi. cowboy post-apocalyptic yeah. sci-fi future thing. Yeah, and so so our our first ever shows was was that that tour with them, and because you know I had never been on tour before with any group, and so that was like that's obviously like the dream for any band, and so. 
I wasn't going to let the opportunity pass me by, you know, just because I didn't have a band. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, was, it just kind of has gone from there. We, we, you know, I found Zach on Craigslist. I just put out an ad, like looking for a drummer, you know. And, um, Kevin, the bass player, has been my he he was my roommate for a long, long time. We had played played in other bands together, so he was kind of the natural go to. But um, but yeah, then you know it's just kind of we've been going since then. So that, that so that yeah that was that first album was released twenty fifteen at at the end, like just in December, December twenty third. It's like that's a terrible time to release an album. <laughs> I just was like I was trying I was trying to get it out before the end of the year because that was my New Year's resolution was to the, finish this album. <laughs> so I was like it's got to be done, but like. It was a good thing Bucky heard it and then passed it along, but because December twenty third is not a good time to release your album. For for anyone who's listening and wants to release an album, don't don't do that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know it's just kind of gone gone from there. Oh, I can get him. Awesome. Well, uh, last thing I wanted to ask before we wrap up is. Um, Sorry, my dog. Uh, the last thing I want to ask before we wrap up is if anyone has to listen to your music or support the band or buy anything, what are the best places to do that? Um, yeah, so the best place to um, buy the music and support is either on our Bandcamp page, um, which is, um, you can actually just go to salemsbend.com and that links right to our Bandcamp page. Um, or um, also on the Ripple Music um, Bandcamp page or their own Ripple Music website. Um, they have they have some of our CDs and stuff up there. Uh, the vinyl and everything is sold out, but um, you know it may get repressed at some point. Um, and then uh, obviously like future albums. But, um, but yeah, Bandcamp is really the best place mm-hmm. to support. And obviously you know, but really just if anybody. Like we're just happy for anybody to listen to us on any platform. So we're we're on all of them, you know, Spotify, um, Apple Music, YouTube, all that stuff. So um, great. And yeah. what about socials? If if anyone wants to keep up with you guys, yeah, we're we're on we're on Facebook um, at uh, you know just uh, Facebook slash Salem's Bend, and then uh, we're on Instagram as well, um, just at Salem's Bend. Uh, so those are our two main main two socials that we use. Um, so yeah, we're, we're posting on there regularly. And, you know, I post all our our um, upcoming shows, um, and you know, upcoming events and and new songs and everything on there. Um, so yeah, that, that I mean, those those are the two best places to kind of keep track of of what we're what we're what we're up to. Um, and then uh, yeah. That's oh, and awesome. then you know, um, also, um, there's a band you can use bands in town. Um, oh, yeah, that's a, that's yeah. always kind of Neat. a useful because I, I always I always try to be good about putting our dates, our, our tour dates on there so that, um, great, you know, that 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 way, like if we happen to be coming through, you know, you'll get a notification. So that one's kind of cool, awesome. Yeah, people need to use that more. I always forget myself sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you know, you mentioned it, and I was like, you know what? Like, I see that email pop up right now and again, and I'm like, I really should uh, utilize that. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty useful. I, I kind of forgot that I added bands that I like on there because um, I mainly just use it to add our own shows. Mm. But every now and then I'll get an email from them, and it's like, hey, this group's coming through, you know, next month or whatever. And I'm like, oh, crap. So it's really – it's kind of like a helpful reminder. Um yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a cool, kind of a cool site. That's great. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and taking the time to talk to us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for having me. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Good luck with the rest of the tour. I hope it will go smoothly. Yeah, yes, thanks. absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. We're we're no excited. We're having fun. Good. <laughs> Have some more poutine on us. Um, <laughs> and. For anyone listening, thanks for tuning in and come back next week. We'll have another guest for you. 